All right, guys, in today's video, I want to go over this video I came across on this channel. It's once to get ahead in your career, stop being so loyal and start being selfish. I was a software engineer for the most part of my career, and I can attest to this. And in my younger days out of college, I kind of did just adopt this out of just, hey, why not follow this approach and see how far it gets me? And it actually does work. So I want you to go over and check out this guy's channel. Let's scroll up here. It is a life after layoff. Let's go through it. Uh, he has some good points in here. I think he's a former HR uh, corporate guy. He got laid off, and uh, he was so he was in the uh, the den of vipers as a human resources. I have someone I know that is a, a director of HR, and I hear all the secrets of what the purpose of HR is. They are basically there to protect the company and not you those little performance reviews you get are not really to help you. It's to document, document, document your performance so they can use it against you in case you get all out of control or belligerent or whatever, or they just don't like you. They will find something in that performance review to facilitate your departure from the corporate family because we are, are all one big happy family at corporations. That's what they try to tell you until they cut you and then they're not gonna come up the next week and help pay your mortgage. Nope. Yeah, again, that's my other video that your uh, coworkers are not your friends. This dovetails nicely into it. So let's see if I can do this here. Tech hard, even though I am an engineer or was an engineer, I do not miss it. I think doing a, a many years of one field, you just get fried and sick of it. All right, let's go. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Life After Layoff, and today I want to talk to you about being selfish in your career. And some of you are way too polite, so I made this video just for you. I'm gonna break down what exactly I'm talking about when I see being selfish. But before we get too far into it, all right, so yeah, like he's just saying, be selfish in your career. Let's jump forward to the good stuff. I am playing at 1.5 speed. I do that in most of my videos because I can pick up the gist of the thing. I don't have time to really even sit through 13 minutes of a video. I can just zip through them and fast forward and uh, just get the, get the gist of the video and it's fine by me. All right, let's go here. It was going to be relatively unscripted. I am just gonna kind of go with it. I'm feeling a little feisty today. And um, you've probably heard me talk about the concept of being a free agent or acting like a free agent. And I guess I also say act like the CEO of your career. And some people have asked me, what exactly do you mean by that? So I figured I would make a video kind of just discussing this. I think it's particularly relevant in the last six to eight months where we've seen a definitive softening in the labor market where now there's a lot of companies, basically everybody's laying off these days, especially in the tech industry, but it's going beyond that. And I think it's going to continue to spill over into other industries as we head further into 2023. It's pretty obvious to me that companies didn't learn their lesson in 2020. In fact, they may have gotten even worse with it as far as treating people with dignity and respect, how they handle layoffs, how they handle the entire process of employment. I mean, even if we look at this whiplashing effect back and forth with this crazy economic boom where people are getting hired left and right, huge wage increases, especially in tech, but it's again, it's spilled over in other industries. And I was looking at it going, this is not possibly sustainable. And sure enough, <laughs> the, the bottom fell out from underneath this, this boom as fast as it started. And now you're seeing story after story of companies just handling layoffs and just the most... Un yeah, I mean, there was a massive hiring, all this stuff, even with the, uh, the uh, lockdown crap, people working from home, it was still hard to, f hard to find good people to hire. And then they were hiring in mass, mass quantities. Now it's like they got too many people, the economy's crashing, the, the, uh, the Western society is crashing, collapsing, the US is collapsing. Um, companies need to cut, they need to cut, and they're just cutting, they don't care about you. Uh, he'll say in here too in the video, you are just a resource. You are a human resource. It's a horrible term. The people that work in the HR departments are pretty much horrible people. Uh, they don't care. They will end up actually also being getting uh, get laid off. They are just the last ones to get kicked out the door. But uh, yeah, they are there to protect the company, and uh, they are given directions to hey, we got to cut, we got to cut some of this, uh, some of this uh, excess. So they cut out the people that uh, pretty much the deadwood first. They will try to get rid of the deadwood. Or if you are a high earner at the company, even if you are good, you will quickly learn you are replaceable. Everyone is expendable. So don't get that attitude of cockiness where, oh, they can't get rid of me. Bull, they'll get rid of you because if you're making 300K at a tech company and uh, little Ahmed over here is making 50K, guess what? They're gonna keep Ahmed and you, Timmy, are hitting the road, pound sand, and they just you know, made a nice little $250,000 savings and more if you count benefits, health insurance, uh, 
air conditioning they got to do to keep your office cool, your cube. Your, remember, you're all mostly cube now. You're cube rats. You don't even have a decent work environment. And uh, a lot of people enjoyed working from home during the remote stuff. And uh, you can get more done. You have a peace, peace of mind. You can relax the environment. You do not have toxic employees, coworkers around you to bug you and so forth. All right, let's just keep going. In a professional manner, and, it, and it, it's a head scratcher to me. I mean, of course we had the better.com layoffs and that whole saga, which I covered on this channel. But more recently, every time I log into LinkedIn, I see another story about somebody getting laid off in a, in a particularly distasteful way. There was a, a guy that worked for Google and he'd been there for I don't know, maybe 10 plus years. The company forced him to return to the office. So they, there was a mandate that they wanted everybody to return. So now this guy is making this really long commute into the office, essentially against his will. And how he learns about his layoff is as he gets to the office, he swipes his badge and the badge no longer works on the building. So he physically can't enter the building. That's how he learned how he had lost his job. There was no email that went out. There was no call from a manager. There was no indication other than that. Eventually he put two and two together and figured out that that's what the case was. Yeah, I actually had this happen to me. The douchebags I worked for, uh, I was trying to be an Excel employee, uh, get things done, be proactive, just get in there and say, hey, this is how we should do it. Uh, just work my butt off. Be, be proactive, make a quality product, and it upset the apple cart with the uh, boss girl I worked with. She had no skills. She uh, was just kind of faking it until she kept, she never made it, she just kept faking it. And because she was a woman, they kept her around, but she had no skills at all, but she was just a smiler and a charmer, but she was a toxic boss girl. And uh, just seeing how I was making her look bad, she had knives out for me. And then she, uh, I think she was kind of hooking up with the old, cult leader of the company and uh yeah she me angle to say let's get this guy he's not he's not a team player part of the family so they just deactivated the badge and all my other stuff i went are you joking me it was just so stupid it really kind of irked you and you're going it it pretty much said you know they all lied about oh you're all one big family we're all one big company we do team builds together we go on vacation together we care about what you're thinking and feeling boom bull crap do not fall for that all right yeah i had this happen to me it's really kind of demeaning you know like and it just irks you and motivates you more. So in a way, it's a good thing because then you realize there are a lot of douchebags out there, douchebag companies, and it, it kind of makes you follow what this guy is saying. Stop being so loyal. Start being selfish. Look out for you. You are your CEO of your own career. And when I started out of school, I was at a year and a half a company. I was jumping. And then back then they said, oh, you can't do that. It will hurt your career. I said, you know, hold my beer. And I was jumping and I was quickly learning. I was getting at least 25% increases every time I jumped and more. I get an increase here. I get an increase there. One job I was able to go out west to California for a whole year on a per diem. And they gave me a car. Oh my God, I sucked so much away. And they're paying my housing too. So if you can get in one of those deals where you're actually profiting off the company in a way where they need you and they're willing to give you per diem. And uh, I stayed in the country, which is good, but I made bank on that as well. So that worked out for me jumping to that other company. Yeah. So let's keep going. But imagine disrespecting your employees to the point where you force them into a long drive they're spending gas money and time away from home only to find out that they don't have a job and they're not even getting paid for that. To me, that's just really distasteful. And that's just one of many. I've also seen stories of people who are in the middle of business trips. They're actually on company business away from their home and they get notified mid trip and how they're stuck out in the field and they don't have a job. So imagine that you're away from home. You don't have a job now and you're dealing with people that you're meeting with the embarrassment of that and trying to figure that all out. Plus trying to get back home and trying to start picking up the pieces of your life. There's also a particularly distasteful story of a person who got laid off while they were in labor and about to give birth to their baby. Can you imagine that? And then there's a person who left their company and went to Google for only 13 weeks before getting laid off. And I guess what really bothers me is that there's no accountability for how this disrupts people's lives. This person could have been employed had they not been recruited away to join. Google. Yeah, companies don't care. Um, you get hire on. And they're not going to tell you like, oh, four weeks later, there may be a chance they could lose a contract or something. Boom, you're out of luck. And you kind of maybe not be able to get back to your old company and you probably may not want to go back. But they kind of made you go through this life changing event by switching companies and uh, uproot your life, maybe move. But then you're gone after four weeks or so. It's, it's, it's really a douchebag move. And I need people to start thinking about this mindset. Do not be loyal to companies. If you're one of those guys that need that company culture, you're fooling yourself. You are fooling yourself. They're gonna, you know, you're gonna join a cult and you really wanna sell your soul to be in a cult. Uh, once the money starts running out or the contract starts fading, uh, you're gone.
they don't care if you're you're part of the part of the cult, part of the brotherhood, you're out. So yeah, you gotta watch that guy. So right, let's keep going. I'm gonna try to zip ahead a little bit and uh, find the good stuff here. Google and honestly, probably the recruiters who hired this person to recruit this. They they're in the same boat as you potentially. And you had every opportunity to go get a job there and earn the most that you can because if you took a job making less doing the same type of work for a company that isn't going to pay what Google or Amazon does, at least they have a bigger paycheck. Hopefully they have a bigger nest egg that they've saved up because they did put themselves into position to earn that, that amount of money. And I would never feel bad for somebody earning the most that they can in their given profession if it means going to the biggest alpha company, but there's a price to be paid. Of course, when you look at the market and you see these companies throwing crazy amounts of money at people, you've got to think in the back of your mind, this is not going to end well. There's going to be a brick wall that's going to hit insurance accept offers for. If a company's not behaved properly and you know that they have not behaved properly, why would you ever get their employment? Or why did you not forecast the need for that work appropriately? Where's where the accountability there where you can destroy somebody's life and then post a job and say, whoops, sorry, we didn't mean it. And fortunately, there were a bunch of people who were calling. Yeah, so there he keeps talking about, they're just hiring, they're just hiring. And they're not really forecasting how long we can keep this position for. You hire an engineer for 200K, right? You got to allocate benefits and all this stuff. And if you don't allocate or plan for it and you have to f get rid of this guy after a month, that's very irresponsible. It's just cold and human. And that's why corporations and these cults and that you just gotta, you gotta think and protect yourself. Be the CEO of your own career. Stop being loyal. Yeah, that's the, you gotta get through it. It works for me. It, it did work for me over the past. Switching companies, whenever I got another offer, Boom, I'd go and say, is this offer better when I'm getting out? Just do it. Sometimes the grass is greener, greener. You may jump into a toxic work environment. So think about it a little bit, but say you just started at a new job and then you, you, kept, you had all these residual interviews left over and then you find that they give you a counter offer to come. And that's even a red flag too. Well, you weren't gonna originally offer me what I wanted or what I was worth. Now you're coming back with more money. But again, you can play the game and say, well, I'm at this company now for a month. They say pay me 150,000, you're coming back with 200K. Take it, get in there, you know, make sure it's not gonna be, you're gonna be gone in three weeks, but you know, ask them how long's the contract? How long am I good for here? What's the worst case scenario? Get it and maybe get it in writing because they cannot come in there and say, oh, we're gonna bring you in for two weeks. Uh, we'll see how it goes. No, make sure you know, because most good things, um, even government contracting, that's a good thing because at least you maybe know how many positions are on the billet, the billets are on the contract. Uh, and that shows you how long that contract will be every year and it's cost plus. And uh, you just know you have at least a year of employment on that contract. So that's a good thing. All right, let's keep going here. Out this hiring manager who posted this job. And it was good to see because again, we have to be holding these companies accountable for this poor behavior. So let's for 20, 30, 40 years at the same company, collect a nice pension and ride off into the sunset. Those days just simply don't exist. It is very unlikely that you'll be a lifer at a company anymore. And I have a whole yeah, the times of the days of being at a company, 30 plus years are gone. They've been gone probably for the past, since probably the 80s. Uh, no one stays at one company forever, unless you're in the government, your federal government, because then you're just uh, living off the uh, public taxes, getting, uh, getting free everything and not really having to do any work, just uh, rotting out your time from 18 to the body bag is 65, yeah philosophy on why even that's potentially bad. You can check out, there's another video that I made about why a steady job is bad for your career. But nonetheless, people used to be able to work at a company and feel relatively stable, but now probably watching this video right now who got laid off, I think the beginning part of November, right before the holiday season started. And it was very unexpected. They did not see it coming. And we promptly updated their resume. We got that LinkedIn profile all cleaned up. We taught them how to approach networking in the most effective way to bypass the recruiter. And basically what that resulted in is multiple job offers. And this person landed a, I don't think it was like a $50,000 raise from their previous employment by the, the second or third week of December. So they were only unemployed for about you know, five weeks or so before they had a great offer. They actually had another offer at the same time that they had to choose between and they were about the same. And so those two offers, as he, the person as, as the person accepted the first offer and started their job in the beginning of January, they happened to be finishing up the last rounds of interviews. And they actually asked me, should I finish the, these rounds of interviews even though I already accepted this job and I have a confirmed start date? And I said, heck yes, absolutely. Treat yourself like a free agent and finish those interviews. And so they finished the interview over the Christmas break. Come January, they start a new job, not three or four days into it, the final employer actually comes with an even stronger offer than the first two. And it's even 30 or $40,000 better than the offer that they accepted, which is now nearly a hundred thousand dollars more than the original job that laid them off. So they asked me, would it be a, so that's the secret. Treat yourself as a free agent. He was interviewing this guy. He's talking about got an offer, got the job, was there a couple weeks. They came back with a higher offer uh, while he, uh, he just started this new job. And, uh, 
And now he's going, well, should I take the offer I just got? I just started this job. Hell yes, hell yes, you're a free agent. You're a free agent. You didn't sign a contract with a new company. Boom, take it. Bad move, a bad look. If I were to back out of this employer that I've only been at for, at this time, probably two weeks and uh, take this other job. And again, the first thing I said is, are you kidding me? This is even a question. Act like a free agent and take the better opportunity. Whatever you think is the Exactly. Act like a free agent and take the better opportunity. And this actually happened to me quite a bit ago. I was at, oh man, I was at a company. I went and took another offer at another company. I went in there. I wasn't feeling right. They gave me, oh my God, I was in a, a cube you could barely put a chair in. I'm thinking, is this how you treat people? And then a lot of guys from New York, New York accents. I didn't, I really didn't like that. I'm sorry. It drove me crazy. Why are you guys down here? And it just was weird working with these guys. And I, I, didn't, I didn't gel well. I didn't go, I don't like this. It's just my gut was telling me, get out. Then uh, through my networking, uh, I knew of a guy that was this, uh, running one of the remote outfits nearby. Not even, God, not even a quarter mile down the street. And uh, they were doing tech stuff. They needed people. Uh, I knew him through friends, family, stuff like that. Boom, I got it. He just said, I need someone. Get in here. I got in there. I left that other job after two weeks. And it's funny. I think I used a stupid recruiter for some reason. The recruiter calls me all mad. Well, you, this isn't going to look good on you, blah, blah, blah. Because you know why? I wasn't there 90 days, so he did not get his commission. The piece of crap. Tech recruiters are scum of the earth. They are the worst. They're worse than uh, freaking uh, politicians, man. Just watch out for them. They, they don't care about you. They're going to put you in any crappy job just so they get their commission. So I did. I was there probably, man, not even in three, three weeks, and I just bailed. It did not hurt me one bit. I got more money, went to this new company, got stock options. Boom, it worked out really well for me. So, yeah, do not be afraid to uh, take other offers, even if you just started a job. If you've been at a company a while and you're actually gelling really good, you're getting decent compensation, uh, and if you get a better offer, and then you really got to sit, am I going to jump out of something good into something crappy for an extra 20000 a year? You may have to think, what are the pros and cons of that? Maybe leave your foot in the door where you're leaving. That's the only thing I say. If you have built up a good relationship with the people you work with, stick with people you get along with. Stick with people where you can build your network. Don't just jump into something right away if you have built that something so the difference i'm saying is if you're at a company for a, a let's say under six months where you can't really build that up right away and you get another offer like after a couple weeks man take it take the money who cares just take the money because you're not going to get those opportunities every day in your life and you're already hot in the market you've been out interviewing take advantage of it that's all i say and the only caveat like i was mentioning if you're at a company for five years you built your network but if you, you know, you may want to consider, is this really worth the jump? And if it's a lot more money, it may be worth the jump. So you got to weigh that. That's the only thing. Time at the company, maybe think, what would I be giving up if I went to something that's crappy or potentially crappy? But you just don't know. That's the thing. So that's the only thing. If you do have time, give it some thought. But if you just jump and you've been under there six months, like you go to um, fake book. And then uh, you Google sends you an offer for 100000 more. Boom, just take it. Who cares? You've only been here six months. Big deal, right? You are a free agent. You are a guy they call like a handyman to come fix the uh, a hole in the drywall or fix the uh, broken window or paint the room or uh, do some uh, front porch repairs. That's You are the free agent. Take advantage of it and uh, stop worrying about company loyalty. My God. All right, let's see what else he has to say and we'll wrap it up the best opportunity for you given your career goals. Now, I don't know what the status is on that particular decision, but the moral of the story is we have to be acting like free agents because if you start a new job, you could be the person that only worked 13 weeks and get laid off. You have to always be thinking for yourself. You have to be selfish. You don't owe your employer anything other than an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Because at the end of the day, companies look at employees as human resources. And I know that we all hate that term and it, it's honestly a disgusting term. But the fact of the matter is, is that you're looked at as a human resource. You're a number on a spreadsheet. And as long as you're useful in that regard, then you have a job. And the minute that you're not useful anymore, they will eliminate your position without even thinking about it. So that's basically in a nutshell. And I'm going to probably he nailed it right there. You're basically a uh, an item, line item on a spreadsheet. And once your use is done, you're out. Forget it. You're done. Uh, yeah. So also, there's another pro tip I'm going to give you guys, especially as a techie. If you're a software dude, I hate the word IT because IT is like, eh, eh, but I'm more of an engineer. But if you're a uh, engineer, software engineer, senior engineer, principal engineer, blah, 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 all the good terms, not IT. IT to me is just I can turn on database and turn off database. But if you're IT, work remote, 
working remote is key. You're not around toxic people all day. Also, you can get more done and be more proactive, more productive if you want to work a few extra hours to basically compete against the lower drags you work with. Again, it's all competition. Once you're gone, these are not your friends. They're not going to call you up and say, hey, 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 Crypto Jim, how's it going? They don't give a crap about you, and I don't give a crap about them. I'm being honest right there. I'm not going to call them up. You know, I've been getting some emails now and then after the one job. I, I don't respond. It's like, why? Well, I don't give a crap. You guys weren't there to support me, so blah, 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 blah. Look out for yourself. It's a cold world, dudes. Just the reality of it. You can uh, be delusional and denial and think it's all one big happy family. It is not. So if you're doing remote tech, I would also say keep looking for work. You are a business. You are a CEO of your career. You have this remote job. That's all great. I would go out and look for another one, another remote job as well, because most of the time with this tech, there's a lot of sitting around. You're trying to figure stuff out. You're cutting and pasting. You can do that in two different jobs and you're working remote. Why not? You're freelancing. Do it unless your company says you're competing. You cannot compete against this competitor, which they really cannot tell you. You cannot work elsewhere. You cannot have a side hustle. They can't tell you that maybe, you know, you're not going to share business ideas, right? If you have a competitor, that's probably the only fuzzy fuzzy part. If you're working at your company's competitor, that's going to be a conflict of interest and just probably cause you headaches. But if you're working at this one tech company and then this one over here is a defense contractor, yeah, there's no conflict of interest. Come on. It's a contract doing work for a service work for a government entity. And the other one may be just private work, uh, changing the colors of a font at Google. You went to MIT for four years with $150,000 loan payments and uh, you're now making $50,000 at Google to change the color of fonts. That's real, guys. That's real. <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's, it's funny because it's true. Oh, my God. So, yeah, work two jobs remotely. You can do it. Sock away, sock away dual incomes. It's your career. Who cares? Again, like I said, if you're not competing against your competitor, then, yeah, game's free, baby. Game is open. Don't listen to these other idiots like Ramsey Nessie. Don't go through that. That's stealing. No, it isn't. You're getting the job done. You're hot. You're do you, you, are you really getting paid per hour? If you're salaried, you're hired by salary to do the job. You're not hired to sit in your chair for eight hours a day. You're hired on a salary. You're an engineer coming in to do these services. As long as you meet those deadlines, as, you long, as long as you deliver the product, show up for the meetings on Zoom or whatever, Skype and all that crap, you're doing your salary duties. You're not clocking in on a punch clock, sitting here for eight hours. That's why these old, old timers, they get stuck up their butt about that. It's like you're not punching a clock, you're salaried. So you can have two salary positions. You see lots of times guys work at this company. They're also consultants at this company. They also have their hands in lots of companies. They're quadruple dipping. There's nothing wrong with that. So there you go. That's my word of advice. Great video. Go subscribe to this guy. He's got a lot more subscribers than me because he speaks truth. And uh, once you get laid off and once you have the uh, reality of what corporations are really about, and he is HR, he knows how bad they are and how bad companies are. You will definitely put out good content. So a life after layoff, uh, want to get ahead in your career, stop being so loyal and start being selfish. What do you guys think? Post below your experiences with companies. I'd love to hear what you had to go through. All right. Thank you for watching.